Hello folks, my name is Sam Gipp. I am an evangelist. Uh, I got saved 47 years ago next month. been preaching for all those years. And I've uh, been traveling the country for the last 31 years as an evangelist. Uh, my wife and I haven't had a house in, in 31 years. We travel two weeks, or two years, two years East Mississippi, two years West Mississippi, uh, going to a, two, a different church every week. And uh, in the last few years, I've been going into churches and pastor after pastor after pastor have been coming to me uh, and mentioning that there is a wolf in their flock and uh, they don't know what to do. Now, the subject at hand is Stephen Anderson, and he is the wolf. He is the wolf. And I want to explain this first. I want to explain. I, I, I wish him no harm whatsoever. Uh, he's a married guy. I hope he never has marriage problems. I hope he doesn't have health problems. I hope his wife doesn't have health problems. He's got nine children. I hope none of them have anything happen to him. I hope they all grow up and live for the Lord. Um, I don't wish him church problems. And I say that because he wishes me in hell. But I have nothing against him personally. In fact, he's an ba independent Baptist pastor. Uh, I think he has the right to teach and preach anything he wants inside his pulpit. But when he's, here's what he's been doing. It starts through the internet and he gets into churches. But now of late, one of two things has been added to it. He, people are joining churches, King James Bible believing, independent Baptist churches, then proselyting members and sending them off to his church in Phoenix. His church is growing not from his door knocking in Phoenix. Uh, if you listen to the testimonies, people are saying, I drove 1,500 miles or drove 1,000 miles to be here because they're being proselyted. That's called sheep stealing. And any pastor should be bothered with that. Uh, about three weeks ago, I got a, a call from a pastor in Canada. He said they just finished a big uh, teen week, and a nice young couple showed up uh, Sunday morning that they had this teen display. Uh, everything seemed fine. That night, uh, the family came back and began unsolicited, just passing out Stephen Anderson uh, DVDs, and this pastor confronted him and told him not to do it, told him he didn't agree with uh, Anderson's uh, heresies, and so the guy left, and then to kind of be in your face, and I will hurt your church anyway, the next Sunday, two other families showed up out of the blue and started doing the same thing. Now, you know there was collusion. Uh, do I say that Stephen Anderson told them directly to do that? Uh, I can't say that, except that I do know what he says when he's in, if you're in a church, uh, don't leave it, pass my stuff out. So uh, this guy is stealing sheep. Um, I tell folks, uh, I call my, my minister a friend to churches. I want to be a friend to churches. And if you visit ten shepherds, and all ten shepherds independently say, this wolf is killing my sheep, and you find out it's the same wolf, somebody needs to go wolf hunting. So last week I had a conference in uh, Des Plaines, Illinois, and it was on the false teachings of uh, Stephen Anderson. And uh, he has, uh, I always say he kind of he's, he's off his lithium. Uh, he has absolutely in panic mode right now. He is, he's actually a raging maniac uh, right now. Uh, and uh, has made every kind of charge that he can against me because he cannot refute the scripture. Keep that in mind. He cannot refute the scripture. So the only thing he can do, he can't destroy the message, can't refute the message. Uh, his only option is to uh, destroy the messenger, which is me. Okay. Um, he sent out a, a, a little video. One, he made a video of me. Uh, uh, you know, he took a, a little segment and has me doing this thing to rap music, which personally, my wife and I almost laughed to tears. I just want to funny. If you can't, if you don't see it, you're missing something. It's one of the funniest things I ever saw. But what it does show is that he is the master of a video. And we live in a generation, uh, especially the younger generation, 20s, 30s, and maybe even some of the 40s, that, that if it's on, if it's in video, if it's on the internet, it's got to be true. The quality of the video uh, decides the quality of the message. Guys, that's simply not true. That is simply not true. And he's got first class video. Uh, so uh, he made this video, and he made this charge that I said that uh, Joseph and Mary named Jesus mistakenly. Now, he has to say that because you'll never hear me say that because I've never said that because I don't believe that. But what the guy does is, guys, you've seen what the liberals do with 20-second sound bites. They take a conservative that they hate, 
They have him saying something, and then they add to it. And so uh, he shows this little clip, and I'm pointing out that before the Lord was born, it said he was fulfilling the scripture that his name would be Emmanuel, God with us. And I'm pointing out the irony that he didn't get the name Emmanuel, God with us, but that he got the name Jesus, Jehovah saves, because he saves us. And then I point out that in the future, now look, if the prophecy is that he'll be named Emmanuel, then doesn't he, to fulfill the prophecy, have to be called Emmanuel at some point? Now Stephen Anderson calls that statement heresy, but you know what he does? Watch his clip, and he cuts me off in mid-sentence because he does not dare let you see the scripture. He cannot refute scripture. Uh, I talked to him years ago, and I say this, um, I say he kind of got locked in it when he, he got messed up on the mid-tribulation rapture uh, theory uh, when he was 12 years old, and he's never left that age. Now, I'll mention a couple of things. He's got a video out there called After the Tribulation of These Days. And he starts out by saying, if you believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, that, started, that doctrine started in uh, uh, 1830 by John Darby. And of course, immediately you feel insecure because, uh-oh, I'm believing a doctrine that only originated in 1830. Well, there's only two problems with that. It's a lie, and it's a lie. It's misleading, and it's a lie. Uh, the first thing is, I, there's, uh, there's a quote that I have in my material when I, when I talk about this heresy uh, by a fellow by the name of Ephraim the Syrian from 373. Now, that's 1,500 years, or, or 1,450, uh, prior to uh, John Darby. And in the 4th century, Ephraim the Syrian says that the Lord is going to take us out before the tribulation hits this earth. So it shows that that teaching has been around since the time of the church fathers, not since 1830. The second half he doesn't tell you is his doctrine of the mid-tribulation rapture didn't start until 1990. He does not dare tell you that. Now think about this. He intimidates his, his viewers into feeling insecure because they believe a doctrine that started, they, they believe a doctrine only started in 1830, and he wants to replace it with one that started in 1990. So if you'd like to feel insecure right now, if you're a mid-trib rapture uh, proponent, that might be a good time. So what he's done is he said, uh, Sam Gipp said that uh, Jesus was, uh, was named uh, Jesus by mistake, against the will of God. Uh, and uh, again, he has to say that because I never said it. Now, let me tell you, years ago he tried to say that I said Jesus is not the Messiah. That is a lie also. He takes a 20-second clip, then he spouts off about it. You know what happened from that? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, he has put this thing all over the internet about me claiming Jesus' name was a mistake. You know what I've got in response? Nothing. The pastors that I preach for, he is, as I speak, he is calling churches, his people, he's got his cyber thugs. That's what I call them, cyber thugs. He gives marching orders to his loyal uh, minion pastors and uh, his members and says, inundate the churches where Gip is going, and tell them to cancel him, and he is out destroying me, which I'm, I'm really feeling uh, insecure right now. But um, uh, I have gotten no one, not one pastor that is having me, has called me and said, I'm concerned about what you said. In fact, I can read you the response. This is the, this is the, the uh, email uh, that a guy said. He said, um, this church is listed as having evangelist Sam Gipp as a guest speaker in the near future. Years ago, Sam Gipp said Jesus was not the Messiah. Lie, lie one. And even recently said that the holy name of Jesus was not intended to be used and that Mary and uh, that Joseph and Mary named him that in disobedience. Second lie. And that his name was intended to be Emmanuel. I said Emmanuel is God with us and that in the future he will be known that. And if you watch what I said, if he had shown what I said, you'd understand that. He also stated, now listen, I don't know where he got this. He also stated that if you mess around with Israel, that you could lose your salvation. I don't even know where he got that from. That is total fabricated. Never said anything like it. Uh, I would like you to know whether your church stands with this heretical teaching and will have Gip as a speaker as planned, or if you will stand up for the name of Jesus and cancel the speaking appointment. Here's what the pastor responded with. I've known Dr. Gip for many years. I've had the pleasure of hearing him preach on dozens of occasions and have greatly enjoyed and profited from his writings. 
I have never heard him utter any of the heresies you allege, because I never have. In fact, I am convinced that you are either lying or taking certain of Dr. Gibbs' um, voluminous comments out of context, which wouldn't be hard considering the vast amount of speaking uh, and writing that he has produced. Whereas you have accomplished what of lasting value, sir, uh, for the cause of Christ? Not only am I honored to be a friend of Dr. Sam Gibb and delighted to have him preach in my pulpit, he always edifies my people, whereas only the only contacts I've had with you have been highly detrimental. But I will encourage my brother to sue you for libel, for the email you sent me, and for slander, for the voicemail you left me. He has already defeated giants. I don't know if he wants to take a swipe at a gnat like you, but I think he should pest should be squashed. There's no, sl no libel, no slander suit coming out of this. By the way, I don't believe God will revoke your salvation for demeaning Israel, but I wouldn't blame him if he did. There, that gives you a statement you can take uh, out of context and use against me. I wouldn't want you to be without toys in your sandbox. And then the pastor signs his name. So nothing has come from this second uh, chunk of mud, uh, except that none of the pastors that I, I, I'm preaching for, uh, that, that what he did, he said, call, email, and demand that they cancel Sam Gibb. Nobody's, nobody's even questioned. They don't even wonder. When they watch the video, they already go, I know the guy's taking it out of context. So there's no problem there. Um, but, but pastors have members, and members get that stuff, and then they scratch their head. So that's what this is all about. In fact, because of his his tirade against me, not only have I not lost any meetings, I've had two pastors contact me for new meetings. So I may make, uh, I may make Anderson my agent sometime in the near future. Now, here's the thing. He can teach what he wants in, church, in his church. But he, when he sends his thugs, when he sends his people, when he sends his wolves into other pastors' churches to steal sheep and send them to Phoenix, there cannot be a pastor on this planet that says that's a good thing to do. Uh, his errors, uh, some are doctrinal, some are, are just perverted. Uh, he believes the church is going to go halfway through the tribulation. To be very honest, I would like him to ha go halfway through the tribulation. He believes in replacement theology, that God has made him the replacement for Israel. He hates the Jews. He says that the Holocaust never happened. That if somebody claims to be a Holocaust survivor, they're a paid liar. And he has a very perverted view. Um, he plainly states he likes to watch women breastfeeding in his church while he preaches. If that's not weird to you, you're weird. Okay? That is perverted. Don't take my word for it. Punch it up on the internet. It's all out there. This is his God. When he has to go someplace, he goes to this God. He doesn't go to the Bible. He runs to this God. He cannot refute my scripture so he goes on and tries to get a consensus, and he can't even succeed at that because the only people that are doing anything are the thugs that he instructs them what to do. Nobody's reacting to this. But, but here's what some things I want you to think about. Oh, one of the things. Here's, here's this. Um, now, he did this, this rant, uh, and he claimed that anybody in, uh, in the church that I was speaking at in Des Plaines, Northwest Bible Baptist Church, Pastor Keith Gomez, anybody that did not stand up and stop it, is unsaved. So this man, now now if you go on YouTube and search 112514, go to minute 45, and he said back in 2014 that I know for a fact Sam Gipp is not saved. Uh, one of his minions, a guy by the name of Paul Wittenberger, called me several years ago and said, Stephen Anderson really likes your material in the King James Bible. Well, I don't know, now he's got this, you know, because he was so off the wall, uh, in this rant, uh, he decided he had to have a, a, a video where he's kind of calm. So he's like he's standing behind a grocery store or something, holding his phone. He keeps looking off to the side like he's waiting for his wife to come with the groceries. She's in shopping or something. And he keeps doing this and doing this. Um, and he states this. He said, Sam Gipp believes that life begins when a baby takes its first breath, that it does not believe at conception. Now, if you take that as truth, you have, you have violated every rule of ethics there is. I have been preaching for 47 years. If you go to YouTube, search Sam Gipp channel, listen to anything I've got on there, you will never, ever hear me say that because I don't believe that. 
Now, I'm a, I'm a member of Treasure Valley Baptist Church. Uh, the pastor is uh, Brother Rick DeMichael. Brother DeMichael uh, is also, he also claims that Brother DeMichael uh, believes the same thing, that um, uh, this all started uh, uh, in, uh, you know, we both believe that, that um, life does not begin at conception, that it believes that it begins when a baby takes his first breath, and that that justifies abortion. Well, here's his problem. This is 2017. This book right here is, is Brother DeMichael's book. It is It refutes that dumb, stupid claim that life begins when a baby takes its breath. It plainly states that Dr. DeMichael and I both believe that life begins at conception, and this was printed in 1210, seven years ago. The reason I say that is because if I just came on this in, in this video and said, do Michael and I don't believe that, Anderson would pop up and go, well, they only changed that because I made my video yesterday. No, we believed it for years, and there's the, there is the printed proof. 1210, seven years ago, it was completely public that we believe that life begins at conception. Now, that should tell you something about this guy's amount of... Um, uh, the amount of research that he does. He has a God complex. You know, I used to think he was immature, and, and I and I do. I really believe this. I don't say this to be derogatory. I believe he has a mental problem. Um, when you can say, over a video, you're unsaved. You're unsaved. If you disagree with me, you're unsaved. And that's what he says. Now, he's starting a cult because... Whatever a cult is, doesn't matter what they believe, the number one thing all cults believe is, if you disagree with the number one man, you're not saved. Now, I want to tell you a couple things about him. I told you, he's got a perverted thing about watching women breastfeed while he preaches. I mean, that almost nauseates me. Um, he had a, a, a man that made a pornographic film preach in his pulpit. Paul Wittenberger, who is the guy that makes his, his videos, the guy that made uh, After the Tribulation, uh, that made uh, Marching to Zion, Paul Wittenberger, uh, in his credits, now maybe it's been taken off, but in his credits, he worked on a film called, I even hate to say it, The Itty Bitty Titty Committee, and it's a lesbian pornography. Paul Wittenberger helped make that. Steven Anderson has no problem with Wittenberger not only making his, his videos, but he has no problem with Wittenberger preaching in his pulpit. Now, guys, I don't know what I'm supposed to have said about the name of Jesus, but I got a feeling that's a little tougher. If you're a pastor, or if, you're, if you are a pastor, would you let such a man in your pulpit? If you are a church member and your pastor had such a man in his pulpit, wouldn't you say something to him? The second thing is, you talk about blasphemy. This guy makes up blasphemy like if you double park your car, if he declares it's blasphemy. In fact, he made up a new term in the 16-minute video where he looks like he's on a Valium. He says, um, he goes, it's super blasphemy. So now he has super blasphemy. And, and if anything I say is super blasphemy, wouldn't you say this? The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus Christ, the living Son of God, the Messiah, Jesus Christ said that all that come unto me, I will in no wise cast out. On June 14, 1970, I was a lost Roman Catholic. I came forward in the Canton Baptist Temple in Canton, Ohio. I got down on my knees. I took Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Now, define it, describe it any way you want it. I trusted Jesus Christ uh, as my Savior. I asked Him to come in my heart and be my Savior and give me the gift of eternal life. I took the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as the complete payment for my sin. I got saved, guys. And yet this guy says Jesus Christ is a liar. And not only about me, but several hundred people. He damned a church filled with hundreds of people just for not agreeing with him. Now, that is a ranting, raving maniac, and that is a cult leader. So, if you have a problem, if you, if you think you need to call my churches where I preach and say, Gip said something that he never said and can't even be proven, you have a problem with that? I'm, I'm urging everybody that's watching this video to contact Stephen Anderson, his church. There's some 
so-called King James ministry that's just a puppet of Anderson. He's got him fronting for him, sending these videos out, or the videos and these emails out. Contact them and demand this. What do you think of a man that lets a pornographer in his pulpit? Why, what are you going to do about Stephen Anderson letting a pornographer in his pulpit? What are you going to do about Stephen Anderson calling the Son of God, Jesus Christ the Lord, a, a bold-faced liar because he said he'd save anybody that came to him, and after Jesus did save him, Stephen Anderson ripped the salvation right out of the hand of God. The Lord said, no man will pluck him out of my Father's hand. That's what the Lord said. And Stephen Anderson must have gone to heaven, took God by the collar, slapped him a couple times, and plucked several hundred people out of his hand and consigned them to hell for not believing on Christ. No, we all believed on Christ. We all got saved. We all did what the Bible told us to do. But we don't agree with a raving cultist. So we're not saved. And I got news for you, bucko. If you're one of his minions, the first time you disagree with him, you're going to hell too. Now, I just want to talk to three groups. Three groups. I want to talk to the pastors that have me in. Um, you have been a monument. By the way, people, if you're watching this, I have not contacted the churches that I... I haven't, I haven't given them, hey, heads up, you're going to get bad news. Uh, I haven't done that. I haven't had to. You know why? Because we're independent Baptists. Independent of a denomination, independent of a cult, and independent of Stephen Anderson. Um, Anderson, in, in his 16-minute video behind the grocery store, he, he, actually, he actually comments on a conversation that never had. I never had, never happened. He says, uh, Gip, come out of the pulpit. And they told somebody, I slipped, I slipped. I didn't mean to say that, I slipped. That conversation never happened except, except in Anderson's head. I'm telling you people, the guy is... He's got visions. He has got a God syndrome, and he's got visions, and they're all, they're all bad. So, so, Lord bless you guys, and I look forward to having a good meeting with you. There's a second group of pastors I want to talk to, and that's guys that don't agree with Anderson and, and never intend to have me in. Look, you don't have to have me in. You, there are plenty of evangelists. You are an independent Baptist pastor. I've had church members approach me at meetings and say, my pastor needs to have you in. I'm going to tell him. I said, you don't tell your pastor anything. I believe this. A pastor has in who he wants to have in. And if he doesn't want to have Sam Gipp in, i got news for you, pastor. If you never have Sam Gipp in your pulpit, you can still have a great ministry, and I will consign you to hell. But I want you to remember this. If you never have me in, if you ever need me to pray about something, if i got a question, you got a question I can answer, if there's any way I can help you, I told you I want to be a friend of churches. I will gladly help you. You owe me nothing. I'm not trying to get in your pulpit. I am completely happy. All right? And you can have a, you can have a great ministry without having Sam Gipp be a part of it. So that's fine. The third group of pastors I would talk to are the ones who are inundating churches because Stephen Anderson commanded you to. Don't say you saw that. You did not watch me preach and say, Look, Sam Gipp said Jesus got his name by accident. I better call all his churches. You were contacted by Anderson. You were told what to do. You are following instructions. Could you at least do this? If there anywhere in the description of your church the word independent is there, take that off and put an Anderson cult follower. Because you're doing what you were told to do because of Stephen Anderson. That is the only reason. And I just want to let you know one thing. You don't have to take that from him. You are. Why don't you become independent again? Think about this. If Anderson had been successful in getting churches to cancel me, that means that from this day forward, every independent, King James, Bible-believing, Baptist pastor would have to clear all of their speakers with Stephen Anderson, would have to clear all of their, their anything they're going to have, all of their uh, events, they'd all have to meet Stephen Anderson's approval, or he will send emails about them and damn their, con their whole congregation to hell. Now, Stephen Anderson's on a power trip. He's already a millionaire. He's made money from the government. He, he, he harassed border guards until they beat him up. And once he got his check from the government, he seems to have no problem with border guards. Now they're okay. But I want to tell you what he wants. In Luke chapter 4, the devil offered Jesus Christ power and glory. He said, I have the power to give power and glory. Anderson's already got the money, but he wants power and he wants glory. He can play the David against Goliath. He keeps saying, Gip's a big name. Gip's a big name. 
Well, I don't know if Gip's a big name or not. I have never desired to make Gip a big name. I've desired to help churches. I have preached to, to churches of three people last year, okay? I go to churches. I don't. Two things I tell a pastor. They'll say, we're a small church. We can't give you much of a love offering. I said two things I never care about, the size of the offering and the size of the, of the meeting, the congregation. I will help whoever comes through the door. If I'm a big name, Anderson says so. I'll tell you who I am to him. The border guards made him rich. And if I am a big name, he's hoping to knock off the big name so that he can have power and glory. He, I'm this new border guard project to, to destroy me, and it's fallen on his face. Now, if you want power, I'm going to tell you guys. Do I want power? Yes, I want power. I want power. Sam Gipp wants power. You want the power I want? In the Bible. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 10, Paul writes this. Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. I teach in the Bible college here at Treasure Valley and I, I beat it. I don't casually say it. I beat it into the heads of my students. You don't split churches. You don't badmouth preachers. You don't hurt ministries. Let me tell you something, guys. A six-year-old kid can walk into a house with a pack of matches and burn it to the ground, but a six-year-old kid cannot build it. The power of destruction is the power of the devil. That's the, that's the deal. Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 4 said no to that deal. I don't want power and glory from the devil. Stephen Anderson said yes to that deal. He wants power and glory. Think about it, guys. What's he trying to do? Destroy, destroy, destroy. What's it? Not just me. He is, he is plucking sheep from churches all around the world. I get I, In Australia, a couple of years ago, they said he's here through the Internet. He's hurting our churches. I get emails from all around the world. He's in our churches. He's hurting our people. He is destroying. And the devil's called a destroyer. I am not out to destroy him. I don't want to split his church. I don't want to hurt his ministry. But his ministry is not a ministry to come into churches and steal people. It is not a ministry to try to destroy anybody that just commits the unpardonable sin of disagreeing with him. And I have got news for you. Disagreeing with him is not the unpardonable sin. I'll give you one last word. I do teach at Treasure Valley Bible Baptist Institute. I, uh, I enjoy it. And if you're a young person and you're looking to go to Bible, Bible Institute, I would love for you to come here. I would love to teach you. If you don't come, there's other colleges. You can go there. God will use you. This isn't the only one. All right? Stephen Anderson believes he's the only place of truth. And if you disagree with him, you're going to hell. You disagree with me. If you trusted Christ, you're going to heaven. I'm not going to consign you to hell. But if you'd like to come, we'd love to have you. God bless you. Let me read this verse one last time. Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification. Guys, work toward edifying people, not destroying them, and not to destruction. God bless you and thank you for your time.